for this app. If you don't have access to Google Play, you can head over to their GitHub page for this app and download the latest APK file and sideload it to your device. I tried both of these ways for this video and I had no issues. Once you have the app installed, there are some settings that you'll want to configure. First, you're going to need to select the path for your 3DS ROMs that you've backed up and decrypted on your own. Once the folder is selected, you should see all of your ROMs with their icons listed on this main screen. I will just mention that these files can be in .3DS format. If you have a Bluetooth controller, head over to the gear icon and scroll down to Gamepad. Configure all of your input buttons and then back out to the previous screen. If you have a high-end Snapdragon processor, you can head over to the graphics menu and increase the internal resolution to suit your needs. Aside from this, you should need to configure any other settings inside this menu based on the tests that I've done so far. Once you're done, back out again and go over to the debug section. If you have an MTK processor or you have a game that crashes immediately after you load it, you will need to try disabling hardware renderer and hardware shader until you get the game to boot. This is going to have a huge impact on performance, but it is the only way that you'll be able to play a game that doesn't boot with the default settings. Aside from this, you can upgrade your emulator to premium status to help support the Citra team. Doing so will allow you to unlock the dark mode theme and give you some texture filtering options. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at the new Citra update for Android. Let me know what kind of performance you have with this release, especially if you have a non-Snapdragon Android device. If you enjoyed this showcase, don't forget to leave a like below, and I'll see you here next time with another video. Happy gaming, everyone. Talk you out.